today on the podcast, we have Chris Heller. Chris is one of the most successful real estate agents in all of the United States. He was rookie of the year in 1989, but that was long ago. He then went on to become the CEO of Keller Williams. And then after that, in 2017, he's been CEO of several other companies. Currently, he started a new company as a CEO of Ojo Labs. So I want to welcome to the show, high producer in every area of life, Chris Heller. Chris, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great, Evan. Thanks for having me. Good. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. And, you know, Chris, one of the things that I love about you and your career is just the the road that you went on. You know, it reminds me of the song that, you know, we started at the bottom, now we're here. And then you worked your way up all the way to the top to, to CEO through so many different aspects of life. And so I just got to ask you, what kind of mindset, what, what was the definition in your mind of a healthy mindset through this process? Yeah, I think... Um... I like that you're you're starting with that question because mindset is such a critical part to it. And by the way, just to clarify, I am currently the chief real estate officer of Ojo Labs, not the CEO. So in case John Berkowitz, our CEO, is, uh, watches this, I want to, <laughs> want to know if I corrected that. My bad. I should have known that. Yeah, no problem. Hey, so back to mindset. Um, one of the things that I think I, I learned and developed early on was that 90% of, of our success and whatever we do is going to be based on our mindset. And the other 10% is just doing the things that need to be done. But when it comes to mindset, you know, strengthening and having a strong mindset, and there, there's, there's so much to talk about that, you know, everything from, you know, building our, our resi- resiliency, um, being really focused on not letting negative things in or limiting the negative inputs and, and, at the same time, you know, double down, uh, doubling down on the positive inputs because I always viewed my mind um, like that I had this finite amount of capacity. And the more negative stuff that came in, the less room there'd be for positive stuff. And conversely, the more positive things I would put in, the less room for negative things. And in the world, maybe more so today than ever before, but, for, but always, there's, there's a lot more negative. And so what we're watching, what we're reading, what we're listening to, who we're spending our time with, limiting the, all those aspects of my life to, to minimize the amount of negative stuff. And then at the same time, doing conscious things to put in positive things. Taking some notes here. So in this process of developing a healthy mindset and limiting what you allowed yourself to see. How did you create barriers or roadblocks for the negativity? Meanwhile, choosing to increase the the positive input and then even choosing what positive input you wanted, because even then that determines uh, some of your viewpoints. So how did you go through that process? But, um, great question. So as far as limiting the negative stuff, so you know, when you're talking to someone, you know very quickly whether they're a positive influence on you or a negative influence. You know, do they give you energy or do they take energy? And so I would minimize my exposure to people that would take energy or that were just negative in general. I just wouldn't have them in my life. I wouldn't spend time with them. I wouldn't give them time. I wouldn't hang out with them. Um, and at the same time, I would seek out the people that, that I got energy from and people that, that were positive. The barriers around um, negative inputs, like I just stopped watching and reading the news, you know, just like cut it out. And um, because, you know, like back in the day when you're watching news on TV, it'd be a half hour newscast. Right. You know, 20 minutes of negative, of bad stuff, you know, five minutes of sports and then five minutes of a feel good story at the end. Um, You know, there was, uh, you know, and then some weather, too which often would be focused on the bad weather. <laughs> so, the, um, so I would just not, I, I would just cut that out and, and not even listen to that. And then the stuff I would listen to, whether it be audiobooks 
or you know, be back before uh, before the internet, before streaming, you know, cassette tapes, you know, on um, on things that that I could learn and grow with versus um, that. And then sometimes it was just music. Sometimes it was just like, hey, here's the music I like that makes me feel good, and I would listen to that rather than you know, talk radio or something that would expose me to to negative stuff that was going on. So just so I'm recapping what you're saying, 90% of the success in life comes from a healthy mindset and 10% is actually doing the work and that you were able to have some of the, the, well, not some of, but you've had a lot of success in your life and career. And that's come by minimizing the negative input, such as news, and other garbage, but really focusing on areas that you wanted to learn or just areas that just brought energy and life into your body how did you but but both because i'm um by nature i'm i like to learn i'm learning i'm a uh, what i would call a learning based individual so so i would accomplish both but i want i want to go back to one thing that you said and that is you know my comment on 90 percent of the success so really what that means is you know our attitude our approach and our expectations so if we have the right attitude the right approach the expectations which you can't really do if you don't have the right mindset or a strong mindset or a good mindset. But if you do, then then having the right attitude, the approach and expectation becomes much, much more easier. So the attitude, like having a positive attitude, right? Having a good attitude about things. Um, the approach, you know, are you doing the things because you're thinking about them, the things to prepare, the things to get better? Are you practicing? Are you refining your skills? Are you role playing? Are you doing all those things you need to? And then the expectations. Are you, are you going into whatever meeting or task or thing that you need to do with the expectation of, of you know, the right outcome versus, you know, this is going to end bad. They're not going to want to talk to me. This I'm not going to get the sale, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I really like attitude, approach, and expectations. So, when I think of myself in mindset, um, I, th- I think a good word sometimes is neglect. Like, you know, as, as we know, the bold law, what you focus on expands. And I personally want a healthy mindset, but I often forget to to put the emphasis in doing the things necessary. And I think by nature, I have a, my, my bent is more positive. You know, I will listen to positive things. I will listen to more enjoyable things. And by nature, I, I don't want as much, but yet I will still get sucked into some of the negative stuff, some of the political stuff, like just right before our interview, it's like, oh, hey, that's an interesting news alert. Let me, let me, and I was like, ah, oh. and then it made me frustrated. I was like, why did I do that? In this process of of change and development, how, how do we go from a place of not just neglect, but being more aware and more conscious of it? Because I think I think by default we'll neglect if we don't want to be if we're not intentionally trying to become more aware. So how do we how do we do that? Yeah, it's it's um I think the awareness is one of the most important things in anything that we're trying to do, right? Without awareness, you can't really see where you're at or where you're where you're at in relationship to where you want to go or or anything else. So having it just be a focus. And sometimes it's just conscious reminders, right? It might be that post-it note on your monitor, like where's my what's my mindset or check my mindset. Uh, the other thing is is listening to that internal dialogue, that internal voice, right? You heard that voice saying, oh, let's check this out. And then that voice saying, oh, why did I do that? We have an internal voice that's running all the time. And, and you know, are we, and, and by, again, by nature, more times than not, that will be a negative voice. So are we consciously doing and, and, and putting in positive thoughts? So I used affirmations a lot and still do. And, um, you know, and, and it's hard to have two thoughts at the same time. So if you're having that positive thought, like, you know, I'm a great salesperson or I'm a great leader or I'm a great father or whatever it is. Um, and, and you have these, these affirmations that you're repeating time and time again or every day 
um, first thing when you wake up or when you go to bed at night. Uh, that really helps set the tone and it, and it creates an awareness because you, you cannot do that without being aware that you're doing so. You know, that, that kind of leads right into the next question that, that I had because, you know, if we want a healthy mindset and we have to develop it, one of the things that you talked about were affirmations. And other than affirmations, because that's one part, what would you what would you say are some other aspects that we can do to increase our, I guess, our uh, to have a healthy mindset? And again, healthy mindset can be many different areas, not just success in business. Yeah, it's 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 really looking at yourself and figuring out what works for you. Like for me, I know um, I need to physically move a lot. So I need to exercise a lot. And that really helps. You know, it's um, it's there's an old adage I heard when I was a little kid, strong body, strong mind. And I truly believe that. Now, whether it's scientifically true or not, I don't know. And and frankly, I don't care because I I just decided, OK, I believe that. And that works for me. It might be um, exposure. You're exposing yourself to people who are doing more or people that are doing the things that you want to be doing. Um, you know, the people listening to this are doing that right now, right? They're exposing themselves to, to something more. So, um, you know, looking at yourself and figuring out what works for you, it might be, Hey, the things that make you happy. It, it's those, um, you know, it might be music, it might be walking, it might be working out, it might be um, who you spend time with. And then, um, you know, make sure that you have that as part of your routine, part of your schedule. A few things that you said, I, I really liked when you talked about the physical aspect, a strong body equals a strong mind. You know, as soon as you said that, the first thing that came to my mind was endorphins that people get from working out. And endorphins are a chemical reaction in the brain. And so I could very much see how, how just moving helps the overall mental health and state. And then you also... Can I, can I say something else about that too? Yeah, please. Everyone knows that, that moving or exercise is good for you. So whenever you do something that you know is good for you, you also feel better, right? That, that also helps in your attitude. And when you don't do something you know you should be doing, that's, a, that's an invisible anchor that you drag with you. And, and we, all, we all have anchors that we drag around. And if you can cut, cut those, those cords or cut those lines or remove those anchors or as many of them as possible, then you can move a lot faster. You can move a lot more powerfully and, and, and do it with, um, you know, with a, a lot more purpose. Yeah, I know that makes a lot of sense because I don't know, I just think of a weight and actually like drowning and what's holding you under the water needs to be cut. I don't know. Yeah. As I'm thinking about that, you know, the, the other thing that you said that really stuck out to me was um, do what makes you happy, but then also create a routine or put it in your calendar or your schedule. And I think that's something that I struggle with in the fact that you know, there, I know that there's things such as exercise that are good for me. Sometimes I'm really great at it. Sometimes I'm not. I know I feel better. I feel sore, but I feel better when I do it. How do we go from like, hey, you know what? This makes me happy. I should do more of this to it being a part of my life. Yeah. Well, one way to do that is is to to create a habit around it, right? When something becomes a habit, it becomes part of your life. You know, waking up and, and brushing your teeth, you know, at, at our age, you don't think about that anymore, right? That's just a habit. Now, when you were a kid, a little kid, you, you had to be taught that. And then eventually it became a habit. Same with any of these other things. You know, working out for me is just a habit. It's, it's, it's like getting dressed or brushing my teeth or taking a shower or anything else. It's just a habit, something I do. And in the same with you know, some of the other things, you know, listening to audio books or the affirmations, you know, they just become, you build the habit and there's a, there's a discipline that, that you build and discipline is, is, is a muscle, right? It's a muscle of the mind. And when you build that discipline in, in any area, 
it makes it easier to do it in the next area. So, and it's also why discipline gives us, um, gives us a lot. So when it comes to your health, the more disciplined you are with the health, the, the, the better health you have, the more disciplined you are with your time. So you, Evan, you mentioned, you know, having it in your schedule. Well, the more disciplined you are about your schedule, about putting those things in the schedule, you'll actually have more time because when you operate off a of schedule, you, you can get more done in the same amount of time or in less time than if you're, you're, you know, just acting randomly with whatever, you know, whatever hits you all day long. Um, the more disciplined we are with money, typically the more money we have. So it's, it's developing that discipline, that discipline of the mind to, to create those habits where it just becomes part of, you know, part of who you are and what you do. <sighs> Wow. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to talk me through this here. Um, what really, what really stood out is when you, one, when you create a discipline, it makes the next thing easier. But when you operate with a schedule, you end up having more time or you used money. It, when you budget, you end up having more money. When you focus on the area, you create the discipline, you end up having more of that. And so, you know, my next question was going to be, you know, what, what would be the biggest contributing factor to a healthy mindset for you? But I, I don't know if this is the golden goose here, but, you know, going back to what you focus on expands, you know, if you, if you don't feel like you have more time, you need to be more diligent in scheduling. If you want more money, you need to be more diligent in keeping track. And I think, or budgeting. And I think what it all boils down to is not just being intentional, but keeping track of what you're doing. Like if we boil it down to not just your time, your money, your metrics, but it's all just, it's, would you say it's keeping track of what you're doing might be the number one cause to people's success? I don't, yeah, for, like, for anyone who's looking to accomplish something or to grow or to move in a direction, if you're not measuring, you know, what, how things are going along the way, you'll, you know, you'll never be able to make improvements. You'll never be able to, to see what's really working or not working. It's like, if you're, you know, if you're driving uh, across the state, um, you know, if you're not keeping track of, you know, your mileage and the odometer and your gas gauge, you know, you're, <laughs> you're going to have problems um, and you may get there and you may not. Uh, so, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, you have to, anything that's worth doing, um, you, you want to, you want to really measure, you want to say, okay, well, what's my progress? Am I getting there? Here's the goal. You know, am I, Am I moving at the speed that I think I could or should or want to? And if not, what do I need to do or what do I need to change to, to, in order to do so? Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, um, not everyone that listens to this is a real estate agent by any means. I, I am. And since that's the world I operate in and you were like the number one real estate agent in the U S I've got to ask you a real estate question. Okay. Sure. All right. And, and it's a five-part question. You ready five for this? <laughs> if I can remember five parts, so go ahead. No, it's okay. Or let me phrase it. It's a five-part answer, not okay. question. When you were a real estate agent, what would you say were the five most important things that you needed to do to grow your business and to uh, get more clients? So... If it was specific about getting more clients, then um, number one was I had to lead generator prospect daily and I had to have a, a goal around that. And then I had to make sure that I was following up daily. So lead generating or, or prospecting, following up and then improving my skills. So practicing my scripts, my dialogues, role playing, um, that would be... Uh, that would be number three. And then I would go back and, and, and probably highlight two of the other things that we, we've touched on. And one is 
in order to make sure those things are happening every day, my lead generation, my lead follow-up, my practice, to guarantee those things are happening, they have to have a schedule. And, and so that would be the, um, the fourth thing. And then I'd have to really make sure that I um, set and exceeded people's expectations. And the reason I say set and exceed, you can't exceed expectations if you don't know what the expectations are. And the only way you can truly know what someone's expectations are if you're the one setting them. Mm-hmm. So there's that, um, you know, there's that saying of under promising and over delivering. Right. So I really, really focused on doing that so that I would provide a great experience for people that would then get the repeat and the referral business going. Is there a six through 10? <laughs> oh, I'm sure we could keep going. Uh, you know, one is uh, another one, maybe number six, is um, spending 80% of your time on revenue generating activities. So as an agent, revenue generating activities are lead generation, lead follow-up, presenting, negotiating, um, you know, revenue, uh, non-revenue generating activities are, uh, you know, some of your marketing or your administrative work or managing your database or those type of things. Now, as we get busier, it becomes harder to spend 80% of your time doing that. And that's where maybe number seven comes in, which is leveraging yourself. So hiring someone to do the the administrative stuff so you can focus your time on the things that are the highest and best use for you and not things that are are going to generate the most revenue or revenue opportunities. That makes sense. I like to end. Well, before I do this, what, do you have any questions for me or anything else that you want to add or say? I think the, um, you know, since we, and I didn't know what we're going to talk about. So, um, but since we talked about mindset and, and, and touched on that, I, I really hope people that, that, that are listening or watching this understand that they're responsible. Right? And, and if you take that approach of, hey, I'm responsible, I'm responsible for the good, the bad, the ugly, I'm responsible for like what I accomplish, what I don't accomplish. You can operate with a lot more power. You can operate with a lot more power from your mind. You know, when you're the victim of something or at the effect of something, you have no power. You're saying that this thing, this external thing is impacting me. So I worked really, really hard to not be at the effect of anything else. And maybe to an extreme and maybe to an unhealthy extreme, I took it you know, too far that I took on responsibility for everything, uh, for, for good things, for bad things, for things that were really, I wasn't responsible for. And it's not, and, and I just want to say one more thing about that. It's, there's a difference between blame and responsibility, right? I can take responsibility if, if our relationship um, has a hiccup or a roadblock or, or, you know, something happens that's not positive. Doesn't mean I'm blaming myself or beating myself up, but I'm going to take responsibility for it. Because if I do, then I have the power to do something about it, to impact it, to fix it. So that's the other thing I just wanted to touch on that, you know, taking responsibility and being responsible for, for the outcomes and not having it be the market, the environment, the politics, the economy, anything else. Have it be you. That's awesome. Where can people find you? You can find me um, all over social media. Uh, yeah, you can DM me on Facebook or, or LinkedIn, uh, Instagram. Um, and uh, my work email is cheller at ojolabs.com. And that's OJO. OJO. I like to end the show with the same three questions. And I'm going to rapid fire here because I know you have to go shortly. What is the best decision you've ever made? Wow, 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 wow. Can't be your spouse. Can't be spiritual. Okay, that was going. <laughs> I, 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 I saw that. I saw that coming. You, you, got, you, you, you took me off the hook. Okay, so other than my spouse, uh, yeah, like the decision to get into real estate was 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 potentially the the best decision I made. Talking about that inner 
uh, voice that we have, especially that the negative critical voice. Um, in terms of negative self-talk, what do you currently struggle with? Mm. Uh, oh, I, yeah, that's, <laughs> this is going to sound contradictory what we've been talking about, but it's probably a fairly long list. You know, I currently struggle with, um, you know, look, I'm human like everyone else. So, um, you know, am I being the best possible leader? You know, am I being the best possible teammate? Um, you know, am I getting defensive? You know, am I um, misinterpreting why I'm getting asked that question or why this issue is coming up? You know, those are things where the mind can quickly take take me down a, um, you know, a, a bad path. So, you know, catching myself always and saying, okay, here's, here's what, here's the dynamic and here's, forget all that other stuff. Let's just deal with what is. Yeah, that makes sense. Now you can answer this question however you want, because this is specific to you. What brings you peace? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know if I've ever been asked that before. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's times when I am, when I am quiet or by myself and oftentimes in nature, you know, either uh, right now I'm talking to you from Whitefish, Montana. So if I'm on a hike or if I'm at my place in Encinitas and I'm walking on the beach, um, that being grounded, it, which which is easier to do when I'm doing those activities, brings me peace. Um, you know, when I'm when I'm with my kids and you know everyone's okay. Um, and then the other thing I would say, Evan, is probably just slowing down, taking a breath and taking a look and seeing that, you know what, everything's okay. Yeah. Like it may not be where I want or may not, I have this goal and I haven't achieved that, but, um, you know, everyone's good. Everyone's healthy. Everyone's, everyone's, everything's okay. I love that. We often, you know, when I get in that mindset coming back towards center and being grateful for what I have and that we're all healthy and that there's no, like, man, over the last month, all three of my boys had RSV. And so it's like, you know, is this COVID? Is this RSV? Is this, you know, and yeah. then one after another, like just makes you realize how grateful you are for, for health and just the small things. So yeah. Chris, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast today, man. Great to have you. Great to meet you in person. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. I, I hope this is helpful for, for even if it were one person, it was worth hey, our time. Dude, I took a lot of notes. So absolutely. Well, Chris, have a great day. Take care. Okay. Thank you.